Hello. Let's talk about what makes a theory scientific. Okay, so there's various reasons why you might believe something. One would be the authority of the source. Uh, someone in a position of authority or an expert, uh, you might tend to believe them. Uh, another reason would be past reliability of a source. Uh, if someone's proven to be reliable in the past, you would trust them going forward. Um, of course, if you experience something directly, then you trust your memory, but you may not trust someone else's memory. And then finally is confirmation by new evidence, which is the method of science. <clears throat> okay, so for example, archaeologists noticed similarities between birds and dinosaurs since the 1800s, and many predicted that dinosaurs had feathers. Uh, but that had not been observed until the 1990s when some fossils in China showed the actual imprints of the feathers uh, in the dirt around the bones. So here's a, actually a picture of one of these discoveries. You can see the tail feathers here. And if you look carefully, like here, you can see some feathers or imprints of feathers um, around the uh, neck and other places um, around the body there. Um, and actually, people have actually found um, not just the imprints, but the actual feathers. This is a piece of amber. You can see it's quite small. There's an ant there. But there's a piece of a tail embedded in the amber, and scientists concluded this is actually a small bird-like uh, dinosaur tail. And you can see the feathers there, and looking closely, you can see there's the uh, fine detail of the feathers preserved in the amber. <coughs> okay, so um, you're probably all familiar with the scientific method. Uh, the basic idea is you have some hypothesis, which is an explanation of how things work, and you make a specific prediction um, derived from that hypothesis. And then you conduct an experiment or search for data to compare with your prediction. Okay, so what makes a theory uh, scientific? So first of all, your hypothesis has to be consistent with the known data. Occasionally you'll get a hypothesis that challenges the validity of some data, but that's very rare. Um, the hypothesis must make verifiable predictions, and in particular, it must be disprovable. So there must be some conceivable evidence or measurement that would disprove the theory. So in other words, it actually can be tested. Uh, and then finally, the hypothesis should be as simple as possible. So what is pseudoscience? Pseudoscience encompasses theories uh, that claim to be based on evidence, so they are explanatory, but they're not testable. So examples include you know, things like astrology, uh, creationism, uh, certain types of psychology where you can take any behavior and interpret it a certain way, but that doesn't help you predict um, how someone would behave uh, in the future. Also some political philosophy like Marxism, you can again interpret uh, pretty much any conflict in terms of a class struggle, but that doesn't necessarily help you predict uh, how you know societies would behave in the future. Okay, so pseudoscientific claims are not necessarily false. You know, for example, scientists can certainly be religious, have uh, religious views, um, but there's no objective reason to prefer one over the other, and. To quote uh, a Nobel laureate, or paraphrase, uh, many theories can describe the past, but only science can describe the future, okay, because science can be tested. Okay, so just a few terms here um, and their sort of definitions. So a hypothesis is uh, a rational, you know, conjecture or explanation about the behavior of nature. And it must be susceptible to disproof by experiment. So there has to be a way of testing it. A physical law 
is basically a well-tested hypothesis. So like the law of gravity, law of energy conservation, or even more recently Moore's law about the advancement of computing technology. Those are all well established. Um, but again, we would never say they're proven. Uh, they've never been proven false, but they've been tested a lot. Uh, but you would never say it's proven true. Um, and then a theory is basically a kind of synthesis of physical laws. Um, so, for example, theory of relativity has lots of you know, equations associated with it. Uh, theory of evolution, um, you know, based on natural selection, uh, again, has many, many uh, variations inside it, but they all fit into the common theory. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, the term theory is used loosely. So, for example, in physics, there's something called string theory, which has never been tested, so it really should be called the string hypothesis. Um, but ideally, a theory is uh, something that's been well tested. Um, this is an interesting quote, science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. Um, and the point being that in science, you're always looking for new knowledge, things that people don't know already. And in fact, you're always questioning or testing uh, the knowledge that we have. Okay. Um, you're probably familiar with uh, Gandhi, uh, kind of a political and spiritual leader in India. Uh, his biography was entitled The Story of My Experiments with Truth. So you can even regard life as being a, kind of a set of experiments in a way of searching for the truth. Okay, I um, also want to talk a little bit about propaganda because that's probably more in your daily experience. Um, the idea of propaganda is to convince you that something's true, even though uh, perhaps it's not true. So I just want to give you some of the uh, techniques that are used. This dates from an article written in 1937, it's part of the reading assignment. Um, the key of propaganda is it appeals to people's emotion rather than to reason. And it's uh, been well known that people respond more emotionally than they do rationally. Um, more often people use reason to justify their emotional feelings. Okay. So anyway, here's a list of the propaganda techniques from this article. First one is called the name calling device. And the basic idea is you give someone a derogatory nickname and it makes people have a bad impression of that person. Okay. Uh, second one is called the glittering generalities device. Uh, the basic idea there is whatever idea you have, uh, you give it a, an appealing name. <clears throat> and these names you probably, these phrases you probably recognize, even though they date, you know, at least as far back as the 1930s. But the idea here is that right to work sounds a lot better than suppressing labor unions and social justice sounds a lot better than redistributing wealth. Okay, so you always give something the, the best name possible. Uh, transfer device uh, uses symbols. So you try to associate um, positive symbols with your ideas. So. Uh, you probably heard the expression of people wrapping themselves in the flag, for example, trying to appear patriotic. Um, or maybe in their um, publicity, they might use you know pictures of Uncle Sam. Anyway, something that would give you a positive feeling. Uh, testimonial device is you have a person uh, talk about um, something good about your idea or your product. Uh, this is what TV advertisements commonly do. They have someone saying, you know, how good the product is. Uh, plain folks device is to try to make um, a, a person, usually a politician, um, seem like uh, just uh, on equal terms with everyone else, even though we all know that politicians, you know, generally are what we'd call elites, you know, normally they're pretty wealthy, uh, not usually working class people. Uh, 
the card stacking device. Uh, the idea here is if you want to hide some uh, embarrassing fact, um, then you find all kinds of ways to um, make the truth hard to find. So you can you can put out lies, you can put out misleading statements, you can change the subject, um, you try to find you know some other um, topic to get people interested in, so they're not interested in the thing you're hiding. Um, you try to discredit the source of the truth. Um, anyway, lots of lots of ways. Um, to try to uh, hide any embarrassing truths, okay? That's called the card stacking device. And finally, the bandwagon device. Um, you have an idea, you want people to support it, you just say many people support it. And that has, believe it or not, that convinces people that um, they should support it because people don't like being in a, in a minority. Okay, so those are some common uh, propaganda techniques. Um, uh, anyway, back to science, um, just remember that scientific theories make predictions, which can be tested by observations. Um, simplicity is important. Um, there's this idea called Occam's razor that you cut away any unnecessary assumptions. Um, so a simpler theory is better than a more complicated theory, assuming it's consistent with all the facts. A scientific theory is never proven, but you know, making correct predictions makes the theory useful. <clears throat> a scientific theory can be disproven, and that's in fact, that possibility is what makes it scientific. Okay, so um, any observation that's uh, reliable, that disagrees with your theory, would, would disprove it. Uh, finally, a theory doesn't have to be scientific to be true. Okay, so we can imagine all sorts of things that we think are true that are not scientific theories. All right, so thank you for watching.